Hey everybody, I'm Jacob Castro and welcome to another video here on Jacob's Aquarium. Today, I want to give you guys five more tips that you need to be successful in the planted tank hobby because a lot of you liked my previous video where I gave you guys some quick tips on how to be successful in the hobby so much. I got so much great feedback from that video. I thought I'd do another one, so here you go. First and foremost, do your research. Since I own a business in this hobby, I sell plants to many different people all across the country. I've experienced many different situations with many different people. <laughs> and a lot of people actually buy plants that they haven't done research on. People just see plants, they see the way they grow. You know, for example, dwarf baby tears. They like that that plant is a carpeting plant. And they see these gorgeous, beautiful tanks on YouTube of, you know, that have carpets of dwarf baby tears. They look amazing, right? So they want to do that. They want to have that in their aquarium. So they buy dwarf baby tears. But do they do the research? No. Are they disappointed? Yes. So to prevent that, do your research. Know what the plants need to grow successfully. I can't stress that enough. Don't just buy plants on a whim. Don't just buy plants because you like the way they look. That's not how you become successful in this hobby. You need to buy plants that you know everything about. Because if you don't, you're not gonna provide the correct things that that plant needs to grow and you're gonna be disappointed and you're gonna waste money. Second, don't give up. Stop giving up. Stop being disappointed. I've, I've, I've talked to so many people that have told me, well, I tried growing plants in my fish tank and you know, all that's happened was a bunch of algae grew and you know that was it you know i just gave up i tried to get rid of the algae but it just kept growing and killing my plants so, so i'm just done the whole fun the whole you know the whole thing about this hobby sometimes at least for me that's what i like is the challenge the challenge of making something flourish and blossom and bloom into an incredible aquarium and not all the times does that happen overnight or is it that easy you know sometimes you run into a few obstacles and unfortunately in this hobby it, just because of what it is that obstacle is algae and so many people give up on their tanks because their tanks grow algae but here's the thing you can get rid of it there's many different types of algae some that are harder to get rid of than others but you can get rid of it there are so many different ways you know the biggest thing that you can do to help prevent algae is to start a tank fully stocked with plants because then you have a lot of plants consuming the excess nutrients that algae feeds off of. And another thing that's really important is having a cleanup crew. If you don't have any algae eating fish or invertebrates in your tank, you will not be successful in this hobby. Every ecosystem in this world, whether it's the ocean, the Amazon river, a pond, no matter what it is, they all have bottom feeders or 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 inverts fish that feed off of naturally growing things like algae naturally occurring things hell there's fish that feed off of bacteria that grow on whales and sharks and things like that there is always some type of cleanup crew in an ecosystem the same thing goes for a planet tank you cannot have a planet tank without shrimp or without an algae eater without something that's going to consume something that just naturally grows in a body of water that's exposed to light you need a cleanup crew so depending on the type of fish you have you know filtration um the type of tank you have you can have many different types of of a cleanup crew you can you can have snails snails are the easiest one uh, shrimp are another easy uh, type of cleanup crew. You need a lot of them though to take care of algae. You can't just buy three of them and expect them to clean a you know hundred gallon tank and keep it free of algae. <laughs> you need a lot of shrimp when it comes to using relying on them as a cleanup crew. You can buy Autosyncus catfish. They're a great algae eater. They clean up tanks really really well. Um, but you know nonetheless you cannot have a successful aquarium without a cleanup crew. Third, don't get lazy. Stop being lazy. I'm so sick and tired of hearing from people, oh, well, I went away on vacation and you know, my tank uh, came back and everything was dead. Oh my God. <laughs> Why? Why? 
Why, why, why? People, let's be smart about this, okay? Let's, let's buy the things for a planet tank. Let's set up a planet tank if we have the time to take care of it. <laughs> so many people buy a planet tank or buy the things for a fish tank on a whim, just like people do with, with puppies on Christmas or with bunnies on Easter. They buy them because they're cute. It's a cute gift for their kids or whatever, but it's just for that time because it's just cool at that time. It's just cute at that time. But they don't think that, well, this thing's gonna live for 12 years. So I, I need to take care of this thing. Just like those animals, aquariums are not disposable. You can't just buy a fish tank and just set it up and there you go. That's not it. It requires maintenance. It requires, it requires knowledge. It requires experience. It requires care. So I say this because I've, again, guys, I've dealt with so many people that set up planet tanks and do not care for them. And then they're shocked when things start to happen. You can't be lazy in this hobby. In as little as 12 hours, 12 hours or overnight, a tank can fall apart if things aren't being done properly. If things can happen so quickly, okay? A fish tank is, is you know, nothing different than any type of other pet that requires love, care, attention, whatever, okay? Don't be lazy, stay on top of things or else you're just gonna be disappointed. You're just gonna waste your money. Do not buy a fish tank. Do not set up a planet tank if you do not have the time to take care of it. A planet tank especially, <laughs> a planet tank especially requires a lot of care. It really, really does. It's not as simple as setting it up, throwing some substrate in there, putting a light over it and watching plants grow. I mean, some people set up vases and stuff and throw plants and dirt and they grow like crazy <laughs> without any care, you know? But for the most part, a, a typical planet aquarium, you know, with fish and filtration, all that stuff, it requires care. So you can't be lazy. And this is not the hobby for somebody that does not have the time to dedicate to it. I would say at least you need to dedicate, you know, at least, at least some type of maintenance, at least once or twice a week, you know, at the most. It requires maintenance and you can't be lazy in this hobby. Fourth, know your water parameters know what is going in your aquarium again i hear from so many people that say well gosh i i bought co2 i bought you know nutrient rich substrate i got really high lights over this tank but plants are just not growing in my aquarium guys water quality water parameters has a lot to do with how a plant grows and if it can even sustain itself in that type of environment. Water is so important. If you live in an area where the water is really hard, there are some plants that will grow in hard water. Like for example, Rotala Walichi. It likes really, really hard water. It'll do great. It even likes brackish water, you know, a mix between salt and fresh water. Um, but for the most part, plants don't like hard water. Plants don't like really crappy water, <laughs> you know? So in that case, you might have to invest in, in a, a reverse osmosis uh, system. It, it, it can be expensive, but that's just one of the things you may need to make water suitable, your type of water for your aquarium. Um, you know, like I said, so many people get disappointed even though they bought everything and they've invested so much money into this hobby, but yet their plants aren't growing. And the number one thing that causes that, and you know, some people may not believe me when it comes down to this, but it's, it's just your water. It's just your water quality, your water parameters. Water is very, very important. Think about it. It's the thing that your plants are growing in. It's the thing that it's, it's surrounded by constantly. Just like your plants are surrounded by water constantly, we're surrounded by air. What happens if our air quality, uh, you know, deteriorates? We deteriorate, we get sick because we're ingesting chemicals and bad stuff for us. The same thing goes with your plants. Your plants need a quality environment. They need an environment that they can be healthy and that they can sustain themselves in. And a lot of the times it just comes down to your water parameters. So before you set up a tank, before you invest all this money and buy all these plants, test your water. Take a sample of it and see what it's all about. You know, see 
if you need to change anything, if you need to alter any, anything, if maybe you need to invest in an RO system to further purify your water, you know, test your water because water is so important when it comes to the health and success of a planet tank. All right, and last but not least, number five, don't be cheap. <laughs> Do not be cheap. Don't be Mr. Krabs. Don't be a cheap skate. You know, be Squidward, be SpongeBob, somebody that splurges every now and then. <laughs> you cannot be cheap in this hobby. I've, I've, I've talked to some people that have bought really expensive plants and they put them in a tank with gravel and a T8 light and no CO2, no nutrients, just fish, gravel, like the, the, the bare necessities of a fish tank. And <laughs> they're disappointed when their plants don't grow. <laughs> you can't be cheap in this hobby. And guys, I understand this hobby is not cheap to begin with. And I understand a lot of people want to go into this hobby on a budget and there are so many ways to do this hobby on a budget but that doesn't mean you can grow any plant you want you know so sometimes you got to save up you got to save up for that you know 300 watt led kessel light or whatever you know you got to save up for that canister filter that costs 200 dollars. sometimes you got to spend some money you know i've actually known some people that have money and they cheap out. They don't. They don't. You know, buy the CO2 systems. They don't. Excuse me. They don't buy the CO2 system. They. They say, ah, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna try growing this plant without CO2. It should be okay. I know it needs it, but it'll still grow because I have ADA soil in my tank and I have a highlight. No big deal. You know, even though they have 10 grand sitting in the bank. You know, come on. Okay, come on. You can't be cheap in this hobby. Um, you. There, well, okay, I take that back. You can be cheap in this hobby, but you're gonna grow, you know, only a select few amount of plants and they're not gonna grow that fast or anything, you know? But like I said, there are ways to be in this hobby on a budget, but for the most part, you can't cheap out. You can't just rely on the bare necessities when it comes to a planet tank. Sometimes you gotta spend a little extra money, okay? So I say that in the nicest way possible uh, because I really mean well with this. I really, honestly want people to realize that it's okay to spend the extra money because you know what it is it's insurance if you buy that co2 system and you run that co2 system on your planet tank you will only have to su have success because co2 makes plants explode it makes they it makes plants grow like crazy you know co2 is that added insurance that thing that's always there for your plants that thing that your plants consume naturally in a in the, in the natural world, in their natural environment, you know? That's just one thing though, okay? So don't cheap out, spend a little bit of money, save up for some of those things. Don't just rely on the bare necessities because it's gonna limit you to the amount of things that you can experience in this hobby as far as the type of plants that you'll be able to grow. So highly recommend, highly recommend that you save up or, you know, start a tank with everything, nutrient rich substrate, highlight, CO2, buy all those things because they will only help you. If you cheap out and you buy on, uh, instead of buying ADA soil or nutrient rich substrate, I'm just gonna buy gravel. If you cheap out, you're not going to get the results that you're after. And we all know, we all know that when you get into this hobby, it's because you want a big, beautiful planet tank. <laughs> You want a tank that's thriving, that looks amazing, that's gorgeous, that you can show off to your friends. You don't want a tank with two or three plants growing and, you know, they look pitiful because they're not getting nutrients, they're not getting high light or anything like that. You want a gorgeous, blossoming forest of an aquarium, right? That's what we all want. That's what we all want to achieve in this hobby is a beautiful planet tank. Sometimes to achieve that, you gotta spend a little extra money, okay? Sometimes you gotta buy that CO2 system. Sometimes you gotta buy that highlight, you know? I just like to stress this because I know people that have the money, but they don't invest in that little extra thing that they could get that'll really turn their aquarium into a work of art, you know? So don't cheap out. If you can start in this hobby with those three things, highlight, CO2, nutrient-rich substrate, the three most important things for a successful aquarium, do it. If you can't, try to save up for it. And if you really can't and you're on a budget in this hobby, 
Don't buy plants that you know will not grow in that type of environment. Don't chance it because you're just gonna waste your money. And then that's only gonna disappoint you and then that's only gonna make you give up when you're buying the same type of plants over and over again, trying and trying and trying and they're just dying, okay? Don't be cheap in this hobby. This hobby is not cheap to begin with. So those are five tips from me, Mr. Castro, Jacob's Aquarium, on how to be successful in this hobby. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys don't take offense to anything. I'm just being brutally honest here based on the experiences that I've had with many different people all across this country that buy plants from me. I mean, I ship out hundreds and hundreds of orders every week to many different people under all types of different circumstances with all types of different aquariums and they all have a story, you know, and I've heard so much. So I thought based on that, I would share some of my experiences with you guys and give you guys some tips so that in the future, if you're unaware of some of the things that I talked about in this video, it'll help you and help you become successful in this hobby because that's all I want for the people that watch my videos. I'm here to educate you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you become a better hobbyist. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you're interested in the almost 100 different plants that I offer on my website, visit jacobsaquarium.com where you'll find a lot of aquatic plants for sale, all at the most affordable price on the internet. Again, the website is jacobsaquarium.com. I love you guys so much. Thanks again for watching. Have fun with your tanks, and I'll see you next time.